Hi, uh, I'm with Dr. Annie Chai today and I'm here to talk to her about her latest achievement. And uh, hi Dr. Annie, how are you? Hi, I'm good. So the last time we sat together like this was last year, right? <laughs> when I interviewed you. Okay, so I remember you were explaining and uh, enlightening us about Cancer Research Malaysia and why did you get into this research, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so if you guys want to read about the article and more personal stuff about Dr. Anijai, you can just click the link below and uh, who knows, maybe you get inspired too. So, first and foremost, it's a big congratulations because recently you were appointed as the chair for GCTA, oh I'm sorry if, if I pronounce it wrong, yeah, uh, GCTA, yeah, for Global Scholar in Training Awards uh, by the American Association for Cancer Research. So, uh, I think for scientists I and mean, for those of you who are in the industry, you would know uh, the significance of this award. So, maybe you could tell us a bit uh, about GCTA. Yeah, so um, before I actually talk about what GCTA is, probably have to introduce a bit about what is the American Association for Cancer Research. So in short, we call it AACR. So um, for those of us who are in cancer research, you would know that um, the AACR organizes annual meeting that is the largest and most attended one um, globally. So they actually have, it's an association that have more than 54,000 members by now. And the annual meeting that they organize um, each year at different locations in the United States actually attracts about more than 10,000 attendees. So these are all cancer researchers that are doing um, basic science, translational science, clinical science. And they all gathered at the annual meeting that will usually last for a week and to discuss about latest breakthrough and share about the um, latest advancement in cancer research. So it is really a, like the conference that all cancer researchers would aspire to attend. But um, unfortunately for um, people like us, like from low and middle income countries, to attend this meeting in the United States it's going to be very costly and barely um, affordable for everyone. So um, I was fortunate that um, two years ago, I was actually awarded this Global Scholar in Training Award. So in short, we call GCTA. So this GCTA award scheme is actually providing financial support to early career scientists um, who are presenting at this annual meeting to support them in terms of their flight tickets, accommodations. And also um, when you are there in the annual meeting, you also get to attend some networking events and also they will bring you for some lab tour of um, state-in-the-art um, facilities lab. So it's going to be a very eye-opening experience for people um, from developing countries to actually attend this kind of annual meeting. So this, um, being the chairperson for this GCTA alumni will give me uh, more responsibility in how can we recruit more young talents um, to join us into this GCTA um, network. Yeah. Okay, so I'm sure it's a big deal, right? So when you got the news that you were appointed, you know, uh, I'm not sure, is it by email or by phone call? Yeah, it was by email. So when you read that email, what was your first thought? How, how did you feel at that moment? Were you like stunned or you were like need time to digest it? Or how did you feel? Yeah, um, to be honest, I was like kind of <clears throat> quite surprised at first because I think like, okay, um, I didn't know that I was going to get it or maybe if I get it, I might be just um, uh, one of the co-chairs. But um, turn out, yeah, I was elected as the chairperson um, for this very first alumni committee. Um, but after that, I think very soon after, I was kind of more settled down. and um, I'm just overwhelmed with um, ideas and excitement about what kind of activities and what can I do and I'm going to be able to make more new friends and engage more young talents. Yeah. So it's more excited about exciting about the post or the role. So how long once you're appointed? How long? Uh, how long will you hold that position? Serving. Yeah, um, it's um, gonna be two years uh, for the term. Two yeah, years I think up to twenty twenty five. Yeah, five. So two, two three years. years yeah. Two three years. Mm -hmm. So within that two three years, um, what kind of vision do you have? Like. Do you plan to do anything big with this role? Do you plan to, I, I don't know, revolutionize the science <laughs> industry? I'm not sure. So what do you plan to do? Well, um, to be honest, I mean, this is really um, something um, very new that we are starting with uh, the AACR Global Affairs Office. So, I mean, the purpose of having this alumni committee is to kind of serve um, three purposes. So we want to um, be able to also contribute to um, enhancing or facilitating the career development of early and mid-career scientists. 
And then for us, um, the, myself, the chairperson and also the other three co-chairs, we hope to be the voice of the, uh, all the GCTA alumni in communicating our needs and our aspirations to the AACR Global Affairs Office. And we are also sitting in an um, advisory capacity for the Global Affairs Office to try and design um, activities or events or to think about what kind of outreach activities that we can do to help them uh, recruit more uh, or engage the current uh, alumni. Yeah. So in terms of um, my personal kind of vision, because in the past um, there has been 86 scholars from different countries, like 24 different countries, but uh, from Malaysia, um, I'm myself as one, and there's only uh, another uh, Malaysian uh, alumni, uh, Dr. Nitya, um, who actually are part of this award scheme. So I feel like actually many of the um, young students out there and post junior postdoc out there, they actually uh, may not be aware about the um, GCTA uh, award scheme and they actually lose, I mean, didn't get a chance to actually attend this kind of AACR big annual meeting but you really get to expose to all the great minds uh, from all around the world. So I'm hoping that through uh, my role as the um, chairperson in this committee, I'll be able to actually plan, I mean, do a better promotions or awareness um, to those uh, students or young postdoc out there and understanding what might be some of their barriers also in applying to become the GCTA because there might be some criteria that you have to meet, like you have to be a member of the AACR and then you have to be submitting an abstract and then before you can apply to um, this GCTA. But I think um, understanding, I mean one thing is about promoting the awareness, which many of them may not know, that they can get financial support through this award scheme to attend the meeting. And secondly, is also to understand um, how can we help or give tips or advice for those who intended to apply but they may not know or they, they might face some different hurdles that it would be helpful for, um, for the, them to be guided through along the applications. Yeah, and then after that, I hope to be able to engage uh, more of the JCTA alum alumni from different countries, maybe designing some working groups where if we are having a common interest in cancer research, we can actually um, form a working group where we can discuss about possible collaborations or share about um, or share resources and things like that. Yeah. So uh, we we are about to come up with some plans for the next two or three years. But upcoming, we there will be some um, events like webinars or workshops that we are already um, planning for the alumni. So earlier you were saying about the. Uh, obstacles and challenges that, you, that that these young researchers have to face. So maybe you could um, expand a little bit more on that, like uh, what are some of the, the the difficult things they have to go through in today's fast evolving research environment and how would Jusita help them to overcome this, these obstacles? Yeah. yeah, so like you say, like um, the cancer research environment is really fast and evolving. So I think the main challenges that our young scientists would face is to be able to keep up to the latest advancement, the latest breakthroughs in science and cancer research. And um, next thing is also about finding the translational niche in their research, bridging between the gap of uh, basic and clinical or translational science. And um, perhaps for young scientists, the ability to establish your own collaborations, your own network is something that can be quite challenging. Um, and other than that, I think things like um, striking a work-life balance or finding resources um, in uh, like funding, finding enough funding to support their research and how to work around a low resource setting might be some of the challenges that I see um, our um, young researchers might be facing. And I think with the hope of um, the GCTA, um, if they are um, being recruited into GCTA, what we are planning for the alumni is that um, through GCTA, first of all, you will be able to um, sponsor to be attend to attend this annual meeting at AACR in the United States, where you'll be really exposed to all the um, great latest advancement in cancer research and be able to actually expand your network and collaborations by meeting with the many scientists that share the common interests with you. And also, um, we are also planning a series of workshops and webinars that will help to train the young researchers in GCTA for their, in terms of their soft skills and hard skills. So um, hopefully also through some um, invitations of the senior GCTA alumni to share about their experience in their career development, I think that might be also uh, beneficial to the GCTA, new GCTA alumni 
to learn about what are the tips and what are some of the advices um, to help them make better informed uh, career decisions. Okay, so from my understanding about Jisita, from everything that you, you just said, in a way Jisita is um, providing or trying to provide an opportunity for all these young hungry scientists, is it correct? Yeah. In, a, in a nutshell, mm -hmm. right? Okay, so maybe, uh, maybe you can share some tips or if you have any advice for all the young uh, young cancer researchers, particularly those in Malaysia who wants to make a meaningful impact in this field. So what, what do you have to say to them? Okay. Um, I think to the young scientists out there, uh, we need to always be mindful that um, doing research is not just about you having a hypothesis that you want to test and go into the lab and generate more data. Um, it's about making sure that your whatever you are doing is actually addressing um, a need um, of the community and addressing a real-world problem. And in order to make sure that we are making impactful and meaningful research, we actually need to rely on global collaborations, especially in low-resource settings like in Malaysia and some other countries in the Asian. Uh, we need to actually leverage on um, the global um, experts to actually advance and accelerate the research development. And um, doing so um, by attending meetings like the AACR meetings, through GCTA would be a very good opportunity. And I want to um, call out for all the young scientists to make sure that uh, you seize every opportunities that you can to widen uh, your horizon and expand your network. Because only uh, when we are doing this together in a collaborative manner with the global experts that we can actually make a more um, synergistic impact on advancing the cancer research field. So um, I would say that uh, start applying to GCTA and begin to get connected to the many thousands of great minds in AACR. Thank you. We need more cancer researchers, okay? Cancer is still out there. And uh, thank you so much, Dr. Annie, for your time today. Thank uh, you, I Anna. hope we get to do this uh, <laughs> soon. Or, I mean, I hope this is not going to be one time. I hope I get to talk to you more. Maybe with this. the next Jusita. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> thank you so much. Thanks thank for you so watching. Much. Thank you.